so these are the images of a nine year old girl nine year old girl who is presenting with stunted growth uh, as you can see that uh, on the sagittal and uh, coronal uh, post contrast t1 weighted image we can see that there is abnormal enhancement uh, abnormal enlargement as well as enhancement of the pituitary infundibulum okay so there is abnormal enlargement and enhancement of the pituitary infundibulum so uh, considering this key imaging finding of enhancing pituitary infundibulum in a child so the main diagnosis should be will be langerhans cell histiocytosis so this is a case of langerhans cell histiocytosis of the pituitary however germinoma and uh, lymphoma leukemia and uh, leptomeningitis uh, they can also be considered in the differentials however this is a case of langerhans cell histiocytosis so this is a 31 year old postpartum patient uh, who is complaining of facial numbness on the axial uh, these are the axial and coronal uh, sequences uh, the t1 and uh, axial and coronal post contrast sequences actually both of them and they are showing uh, that there is an avidly enhancing uh, left cavernous sinus mass uh, which is uh, causing which is in which is, which is uh, causing the encasement uh, and marked narrowing of the uh, cavernous segment of the left ICA so there is there is marked uh, uh, this is encasing the cavernous segment of the left ICA along with it is causing marked narrowing of the uh, left ICA also there is a extension of this mass into the uh, prepontine cistern this mass is extending into uh, the prepontine uh, cistern on the left side and uh, the hyper intense signal intensity uh, overlying the pons on the right side is actually artifactual so this is artifactual however the pawn signal intensity is artifactual however this is the everly enhancing left cavernous sinus mass so this uh, uh, considering this imaging finding the top diagnosis is of meningioma however uh, schwannoma uh, pituitary macroadenoma and uh, toulouse hunt syndrome and crowded cavernous fistula uh, or perineural spread of tumor or infection they can also be considered in the differentials so next is uh, the case of an adult man uh, presenting with headache and uh, visual disturbances now these are the coronal uh, t1 pre and post contrast uh, sequences uh, which are showing the abnormal thickening and enhancement of the pituitary infundibulum which is uh, most pronounced superiorly so uh, considering this imaging finding a key imaging finding of enlarged or enhancing pituitary infundibulum in adult patient uh, the top uh, uh, diagnosis uh, should be uh, metastasis however uh, neurosarcoidosis uh, can also be considered lymphocytic hypophysitis uh, mets or lymphoma and uh, pituitary uh, cytoma pituitary cytoma can also be pituitary cytoma or pituitary cytoma can also be considered in the differential however metastasis will be our top differential now this is a case of a 14 year old boy who is presenting with migraine and headaches now this is the sagittal t1 weighted mri and it is uh, showing a lobulated hyper intense mass within the interpeduncular uh, cistern and it is extending into the uh, posterior aspect of the uh, suprasolar cistern so there is a lobulated hyper intense mass within the interpeduncular cistern and it is extending into the posterior aspect of the suprasolar cistern so considering this uh, key imaging finding of midline uh, suprasolar t1 t1 hyper intense mass the, is actually it is hyper intense on t1 so the top diagnosis should be lipoma because it is t1 hyper intense and other than lipoma you can consider germ cell tumor craniopharyngioma uh, ectopic posterior pituitary and blood products as well in the differentials so this is a case of a 43 year old woman presenting with headaches uh, on the axial flare sequence uh, we can see that there is an intermediate uh, to hyper intense mass along the parietal uh, sorry along the periatrial a region of the right lateral ventricle uh, with surrounding vasogenic edema on the axial t1 post contrast sequence we can see that there is enhancement in this lesion and which is more prominent along the periphery so basically this is a peripherally enhancing lesion 
and uh, it is uh, located in the periatrial region of the right lateral ventricle with sounding vasogenic edema. So considering the key imaging finding of periventricular mass or enhancement with edema, the top differential should be primary CNS lymphoma. And other than primary CNS lymphoma, you can consider ventriculitis or uh, ependymitis or any glial tumor uh, in the differential. So this is a case of a 14 year old boy who is presenting with headache and seizures. Uh, these are the images as you can see right on the axial titubated MRI. There is a cystic and uh, solid cortically based mass in the right temporal lobe uh, with surrounding vasogenic edema. And uh, On the T1 weighted, on the axial T1 weighted uh, post contrast MRI, there is uh, this lesion is showing enhancement of the solid components as well as mild overlying meningeal enhancement is also noted here. Mild overlying meningeal enhancement. There is mild overlying meningeal enhancement along with the uh, enhancement of this uh, solid component of this lesion. So, Considering this key imaging finding of cortically based cystic temporal lobe mass in a patient with seizures, uh, it's also enhancing. Uh, the top diagnosis will be a pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma. And in the differentials, you can include ganglioglioma or uh, DNET, that is just embryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor, or balloon cell cortical dysplasia, that is Taylor cortical dysplasia. So next case is of a 64-year-old man who has uh, presented with new onset of seizures. These are the images provided. As you can see that this is the axial flare uh, sequence and this is showing confluent regions of cortical and subcortical uh, signal abnormality with mild mass effect throughout the left temporal lobe. And uh, there is also a subtle signal abnormality involving the uh, inferior left frontal and medial right temporal lobes okay so there is subtle uh, signal abnormality involving the inferior left frontal and uh, medial right temporal lobes considering this clinical uh, this imaging uh, picture of diffuse infiltrating uh, temporal lobe mass or edema uh, the top di diagnosis should be herpes encephalitis okay this should be the top differential herpes encephalitis other than that you can consider ischemia or infarction or gliomatosis cerebri, uh, limbic encephalitis, uh, status epilepticus in the differentials list. But however, this is a case of herpes encephalitis. So this is an adolescent boy uh, presenting with headaches. These are the images. Now in the axial T1 weighted MRI, there is an ovoid mass, there is an ovoid mass within the right frontal lobe uh, which contains uh, linear, linear striations of increased signal intensity. And uh, the majority of the increased signal is uh, actually it is hypo intense on uh, the T1 uh, fat suppressed image. Okay, so on the fat suppressed image, uh, this signal is suppressed. So, considering this uh, key imaging finding of T1 hyper intense parenchymal mass, the top differential should be again fat containing lesion or dermoid. And uh, in the differentials, you can add hemorrhage or melanin, any melanin containing lesion or uh, fat, again, any proteinaceous lesion, uh, calcification, ossification or enhancement should also be added in the differentials. So this is T1 hyper intense parenchymal mass, which is most likely con consistent with any fat containing lesion or dermoid. So these are the images uh, provided of a 62 year old woman who presented with altered mental status and focal neurological deficits. So on the axial flare sequences, you can see that there are numerous uh, bilateral uh, hyperintense lesions which are centered at the gray white matter junction uh, with regions of overlying uh, cortical signal abnormality. On the axial T1 post contrast MRI, there is nodular enhancement uh, of a lesion which is located within the left parietal lobe along the central sulcus. And uh, several of these lesions are showing the susceptibility artifact on the GRE imaging 
on the grease sequence uh, many of these lesions are giving the susceptibility artifact uh, the corpus callosum uh, posterior fossa and brain stem uh, were not involved which is not shown here however these regions were spared and uh, so this is uh, uh, the key imaging finding here is multiple lesions at gray white matter junction so the top differential uh, should be vasculitis along with it uh, ischemic emboli or septic emboli uh, metastasis uh, should also be considered so this is a case of a young adult who has presented with headaches and uh, this is the zoomed in view of uh, the axial T1 uh, post contrast image through the posterior fossa and it uh, shows an avidly enhancing uh, dural based mass along the inner margin of the mastoid along the inner margin of the mastoid and the petrous uh, portions of the left temporal bone and also an enhancing dural tail is seen both anteriorly and posteriorly in this mass. So considering this dural based mass key imaging finding is the dural based mass that this is a dural based mass so the top differential is of course meningioma and uh, plaque like meningioma in a patient with NF2 also uh, the hemangiopericytoma uh, can be included in the differential along with metastasis or lymphoma or any granulomatous disease process like tuberculosis and sarcoidosis uh, they also involve the dura and uh, extramedullary hematopoiesis or rosai doffman disease which is uh, a non langerhans cell histiocytosis they most commonly occur in children young adults so in this case this is a diagnosed case of meningioma plaque like meningioma in a patient with nf2 so this is a case of a 53 year old woman uh, presenting with migraine and headaches uh, these are the axial t2 weighted mri and flare sequence uh, showing a bilobed uh, bilobed circumscribed extra axial mass which is along the uh, prepontine along the prepontine cistern and uh, medial aspect of the right middle cranial fossa with involvement of the meckel's cave and cavernous sinus uh, its uh, anterior medial margin uh, contacts the lateral wall of the cavernous uh, ICA and uh, there is mass effect on the adjacent uh, temporal lobe and pons. Also you can see uh, that uh, the signal intensity on uh, T2 is uh, heterogeneous here you can see that on T2 a weighted sequence uh, the signal intensity is he heterogeneous with mixed regions of iso and hyper intensity uh, and the lesion is uh, it is iso intense to gray matter on t1 weighted mri it is iso on t1 weighted mri however it is avidly enhancing on the post contrast sequence so considering these imaging findings of a circumscribed extra axial mass at the skull base uh, the key uh, and considering this location of Meckel's cave the key uh, diagnosis here is schwannoma that is trigeminal schwannoma with this typical picture uh, this typical imaging picture is suggestive of trigeminal schwannoma however we can also include meningioma in the differentials uh, along with hemangiopericytoma and lymphoma. So this is the case of a 17 year old boy presenting with headache and uh, as you can see that so this is a case of a 17 year old boy presenting with headache and you can see that on the axial T2 weighted MRI uh, there is a subdural, connect, uh, subdural collection over the left convexity uh, which is causing the inward mass effect on the underlying parenchyma and uh, the left lateral ventricle as well as uh, it is uh, causing the midline shift to the right so this collection is iso intense to csf and uh, this uh, other image which is the t2 weighted mri axial section taken at the level of middle cranial fossa reveals that there is an arachnoid cyst on the left side there is an arachnoid cyst on the left side which seems to be contiguous with this subdural collection so considering these imaging findings of uh, a subdural fluid collection uh, our top differential will be of course subdural effusion uh, or subdural hygroma uh, which is due to this uh, ruptured arachnoid cyst other uh, differentials can include subdural hematoma or subdural hygroma 
subdural empyema uh, in subdural effusion. However, this is a case of subdural hygroma, which is secondary to the ruptured arachnoid cyst. So this is a case of a two and a half year old boy presenting with chronic headache, vomiting and developmental delay. So you can see that on the axial T2 weighted MRI, there is a large cystic and solid mass uh, which is centered within the deep gray white matter on the left with mass effect uh, on the body of the left lateral ventricle and uh, there is uh, entrapment of the atria. Also there is midline shift to the right with mass effect uh, on and enlargement of the right lateral ventricle as well. Uh, the solid components uh, are showing uh, the solid components are uh, uh, heterogeneous uh, with regions that are uh, hyper and hypo intense. So the solid components are basically heterogeneous looking with regions of hyper and hypo intensities. The T1 uh, post contrast uh, the axial T1 post contrast scan reveals enhancement of the solid components and there is also enhancement along the walls of the some of the cystic components. So this imaging picture is uh, that the large supratentorial mass in an infant or young child is very typical presentation of uh, desmoplastic infantile ganglioglioma that is DIG. It is a cystic looking uh, bubbly looking lesion is a very typical presentation of uh, desmoplastic infantile ganglioglioma. Other than that, you can include astrocytoma, teratoma, supratentorial P-net uh, in the differentials list, also ATRT and choroid plexus tumors uh, like choroid plexus papillomas can also be included in the differential. So this is a 53-year-old man presenting with altered mental status and uh, this is the axial T2 weighted MRI and it shows a large uh, intermediate to hyper intense mass which is involving and expanding the splenium of the corpus callosum. So considering this key imaging finding of uh, expensial corpus callosal mass, uh, the top diagnosis should be CNS lymphoma. Other than that, you can add GBM in the differential glioblastoma multiform, uh, demyelinating disease and lymphoma will obviously be in the top list. So these are the images uh, of a 28-year-old 20, woman with headaches and left-sided weakness, left-sided weakness, okay. So this is the XLT1 post-contrast uh, sequence with fat suppression and it is showing a ring-enhancing uh, ring mass uh, within the right centrum semi ovale The margins uh, of this mass are relatively thick and irregular and also there is adjacent vasogenic edema which is quite subtle. There is a subtle vasogenic edema adjacent to this lesion. The corresponding axial perfusion uh, weighted uh, imaging shows the increased perfusion along the uh, peripheral margins of this mass that is uh, depicted with the focal areas of uh, red and green uh, compared to the adjacent and uh, contralateral white matter which is shown in blue. So there is uh, increased perfusion along the periphery, peripheral margins of this mass. So considering this key imaging finding of a ring enhancing mass, uh, ring enhancing mass in the uh, centrum semi ovel, right side centrum semi ovel, so the top diagnosis should be a neoplasm or a high grade glioma and uh, other than that you can add abscess or subacute infarct, uh, demyelinating disease uh, like MS and resolving contusion as well in the differentials. However, the no, the top diagnosis should be a high grade glioma or neoplasm. So this is the case of a 70 year old man who has uh, presented uh, with uh, uh, high grade glioma post excision and radiation therapy. So the patient has been treated uh, for high grade glioma uh, surgically and afterwards radiation therapy is also given. So this is the uh, axial T1 post contrast uh, MRI and uh, it shows mass-like enhancement uh, within a surgical cavity which is located in the right occipitotemporal region with surrounding hypo-intense uh, vasogenic edema. The short echo MR spectroscopy uh, which was performed over the region of the enhancement reveals the suppression of the metabolites with a prominent lipid peak uh, at, that is 0 0.9 ppm and lac lipid lactate peaks are also prominent. So considering these imaging findings, uh, that is enhancement in the surgical bed, the top differential should be radiation necrosis 
and other than that you can include a recurrent or residual tumor and uh, post treatment changes in the differentials so next is case of a young adult uh, who has presented with new onset seizures so this is the axial ct scan showing a cystic and solid right temporal lobe mass uh, with prominent calcifications which are extending into the deep white matter so these calcifications are extending into the deep white matter and this is a cystic and solid right temporal lobe mass so the key imaging finding here is the calcified uh, supratentorial parenchymal mass so the top diagnosis will be oligodendroglioma in an adult patient if you are presented with a calcified mass uh, calcified supratentorial mass so the top differential should always be oligodendroglioma other than that you can add astrocytoma any vascular malformations like AVMs or cavernomas, etc., ependymoma, infection, and metastasis uh, in the differentials list. However, this is a case of oligodendroglioma. So, 46 year old woman presenting with the new onset headache, and uh, these are the images that are provided. So, on the sagittal T1 weighted MRI and the axial T2 weighted MRI, we can see that there is a right frontal uh, parenchymal hematoma. Uh, with blood fluid levels that is uh, the blood products are of different ages and also there is surrounding edema which is uh, shown with the T2 hyper intensity surrounding this uh, lesion. The intraparenchymal hemorrhage is predominantly hyper intense on T1 and it is uh, hypo intense on T2 sequence corresponding to an early subacute hemorrhage. Now these are the uh, coronal images of uh, the susceptibility uh, related uh, susceptibility weighted image or, or the GRI images we will say that these are the T2 star GRI images and they show the blooming artifact they are showing the blooming artifact bilaterally as well as within the uh, superior sagittal sinus and uh, the superficial cortical veins which is uh, very much uh, consistent with thrombus. The MR venography, which is not shown here, revealed the absence of the normal flow signal within the superior sagittal sinus. So, as you can see here, uh, that the key imaging finding here is of intraparenchymal hemorrhage. So, the top differential will, of course, be hemorrhagic venous infarct. And uh, uh, other than that, you can add uh, vascular malformation in the differential, contusions, and uh, cerebral amyloid disease as well and in the last you can put hemorrhagic tumor in the differential like GBM etc. So this is however a diagnosed case of uh, hemorrhagic venous infarct. So this is an adolescent boy uh, who has presented with increasing headaches. So as you can see that on the axial flare sequence there is a circumscribed ISO2 hypo intense mass within the atria of the left lateral ventricle with a prominent uh, serpentine hypointense flow void. Also, there is enlargement of the lateral ventricles with a rind of uh, transependymal flow of CSF and edema within the left posterior temporal and occipital lobes. On the axial uh, T1 post contrast uh, image, we can see that this lesion is showing avid homogeneous enhancement. Uh, there is avid homogeneous enhancement of this mass as well as there is enhancement of the uh, prominent serpentine uh, vasculature that we have seen. So considering this uh, typical uh, imaging finding of a lateral ventricular mass, uh, the top differential will be meningioma and other than that you can add uh, choroid plexus tumor uh, like choroid plexus papilloma or any malignant choroid plexus carcinoma or uh, central neurocytoma ependymoma, subependymoma, metastasis. They all can be included in the differentials. However, this is a diagnosed case of meningioma. Because they are the most common primary intracranial and intraventricular or atrial tumors in adults. So this is a, a case of young adult man presenting with headaches and intermittent nausea vomiting. As you can see that on the axial T2 weighted MRI, and flare sequences, uh, there is a mixed cystic and solid mass uh, which is centered along the anterior aspect of the septum pellucidum 
and uh, the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle. The solid component is uh, predominantly hyper intense uh, with the focal regions of uh, focal regions of hypo intensity. The dominant cystic component in the frontal horn of the right lateral ventricle is hyper intense compared to uh, the CSF. Now, these are the axial T1 and uh, post contrast uh, sequences and you can see that uh, the axial T1 weighted MRI uh, shows portions of the solid component to be uh, intrinsically hyper intense including the T2 hyper intense uh, foci uh, which, uh, which is consistent with calcification and uh, solid enhancement is noted. The dominant uh, cystic component is slightly hyper intense uh, compared to CSF and the lateral ventricles are enlarged with mild transependymal uh, flow of CSF on the flare image here okay mild transependymal CSF flow on the flare image. So this is uh, a mass lesion which is centered at the septum pericetum or foramen of Monroe and uh, considering this typical picture the top diagnosis will be oligodendroglioma and uh, in the differentials you can add astrocytoma or central neurocytoma, uh, oligodendroglioma, ependymoma, subependymoma and metastasis. So this is case of a 56 year old man presenting with chronic headaches. So you can see that on the axial T2 weighted and flare sequences there, uh, there is a, a lobulated hyper intense mass uh, which is centered uh, within the inferior aspect of the fourth ventricle. And uh, this mass is uh, iso2 hyper intense on uh, T1 weighted MRI and it is not enhancing on the post contrast sequence okay so it is iso2 hypo intense on T1 weighted M M MRI image and it is not enhancing however we can see that uh, this lesion is lobulated and hyper intense on T2 weighted MRI and flare sequences and it is centered within the inferior aspect of the fourth ventricle. So considering this uh, key, key imaging finding of fourth ventricle mass in an adult patient, the top diagnosis will be subependymoma. Other than that, you can add ependymoma in the differential, choroid plexus tumor, metastasis, and meningioma.